Good afternoon. <clears throat> Let's turn to uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 to start out with. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 1, and I'm going to start reading it at verse 9. It says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So I want to talk today about how God has committed the gospel to men. See, God, God has determined that the gospel is to be preached and made manifest through men. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 7, uh, Paul says, But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So um, it's, it just says again that the gospel was committed to, to Paul and to Peter. Um, see, this is, this is God just decided to use men to spread and teach the, the gospel. This is, this is what God decided to do. Um, now in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, um, verse 2, he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So he, here again you've got um, the, the things which Timothy heard of Paul. He was to commit to faithful men. So he's, he's passing on this, um, this um, the, he's passing on the, the teaching of the gospel to faithful men. So, so it's committed to Timothy, and he gives it to men. And, and see, this is how God has determined that the gospel be spread, is through men. So why would God do something like this? Why would, why would God entrust men with the gospel? Well, number one, this is what pleased him. This is what God wanted to do. In 1 Corinthians 1, 21, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So <laughs> this is the way God wanted to do it. And, and before, we, before we try and figure out anything else, we need to accept that this is what God wanted, Amen. and this is, this, this is what we will accept. Amen. Now, now an, another reason um, that God would do this is it, it brings God glory when he's able to use men to speak the wonders of the gospel. Um, in Acts 4.13, Peter was preaching the gospel. And it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, th this is an amazing thing, that God is able to take a man, Amen. and that he's able to speak the things of God. Yeah, yeah. See, this is, this is not natural for man. So, so when, when you see someone preaching the gospel, you think, wow, God must have done something. And also, since God has given the gospel to men to preach, see, that now, now it has to be received by faith. So we have to believe the record that has been preached of Jesus. See, we have to believe the record that God has given of his son. So 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 says, Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. 
Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. See, see, God has entrusted us with the gospel, and this is a great responsibility. See, it's, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, King Saul was supposed to destroy all the Amalekites and everything they had, but, but he saved the king and some of the animals. And because of this, God took away the kingdom from him. Now, see, if God gives you a job to do, you, you better do it faithfully. See, if, if God has committed the gospel to you, well, we, we better be careful to, um, to be faithful in this work. So um, and ex- the apostles took, took this job from the Lord very seriously. And, and it, it talks about them doing things for the sake of the gospel. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 19, For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I may gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I may gain them that are without the law. To the weak I became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. See, Paul was a faithful steward of the gospel. And, and Romans 1 says that, is talking about Paul, it says that he was separated unto the gospel of God. <laughs> I, like, I like the way it says that. He's, he was separated to the gospel of God. See, this, this was really um, Paul's only concern. This is where his life was focused. He was separated to the gospel of God. So um, God committed the gospel to his trust and Paul took responsibility and ownership over it. See, in Romans 2.16 and Romans 16.25 and 2 Timothy 2.8, Paul calls the gospel my gospel. See, he, he, God, God committed the gospel to him and, and he just received it. He said, yes, it's my gospel now. <laughs> not, that, not that he was the originator of it, but he took, he took it to his responsibility and he called it my gospel. So if God has determined to use his people to preach the gospel, we must be faithful to speak the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9, 16, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. He says, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Amen. See, Paul, Paul recognized how important this was. He said, I have to preach the gospel. So not only do we have to be faithful to speak the gospel, we must also speak it faithfully. So, so you have to say the right thing. Um, Jeremiah 23, 25, I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. But he that hath my words, he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? So if God has given you his word, you need to speak it, and you also need to speak it faithfully. Uh, Galatians 1.6 I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ 
unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you <clears throat> than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For yet if I pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So it's, it's important that we preach, but not just anything. See, he, he said, if anyone preaches anything else, let him be accursed. See, this, this, is a very, um, this is a very important thing that we preach the gospel, not just anything. So God is the one who entrusted us with the gospel, and he is the one that we should be seeking to please when we preach it. So he's committed it to us, but see, now, now we have to remember that he is the one who committed it to us, and so we, we are seeking to please him when we speak it. And, and also, since God has entrusted us with the gospel, we must preach it in a way that honors God. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, 3, For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear to, unto us. For remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable to any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. So God is the one who committed the gospel to us, and we should be seeking to please him in what we say when preaching the gospel, and how we say it, and how we act. See, Amen. we, we want to please God. He's the one who committed it to us. So finally, we talked about the responsibility that comes with God committing the gospel to us. But, but this is also a great privilege. Um, we already read from 1 Corinthians 9, where Paul says, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. See, God is going to reward us for this. This is, this is really an amazing thing that God has allowed us to be part of his work in spreading the gospel. See, this, this is, you know, we should, this is a great blessing for us to be able to speak of the things that we have experienced in Christ. We're able to talk of what God has done for us. We, we're able to be a part of God's work, and, and God wants us to reward us for it also. It's, it's his work, but he's rewarding us when he gives us a part in it. So um, Mark 10, 29, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. 